Basic Instinct is widely regarded as one of the most notorious, loved, hated, talked about erotic thrillers of the early 1990s. Arriving a few years after Fatal Attraction, and alongside other films like Single White Female, Basic Instinct is a psychological thriller of obsession and excessive desire, in which a male protagonist is seduced by a murderous woman whose sexuality presents her ultimate threat. This is a world where there are no female detectives and no male suspects. When Nick and his partner Gus first arrive at Catherine's house, the woman who greets them is framed by a grand staircase. Just think of Barbara Stanwyck's entrance in Double Indemnity. This is the blonde they assume is Catherine. It takes her 30 seconds into their interrogation to say, you're looking for Catherine, not me. This, instead, is Roxy, Catherine's so-called friend. Already the lesbian lover is simultaneously erased and must act as a visual stand-in for Catherine herself. We will become familiar with the attachment of visual tropes to such narrative conventions. You're looking for Catherine, not me. Who are you? I'm Roxy. I'm her friend. Well, Roxy, do you know where your friend is? She's out at the beach house at Stinson. Cedar 1402. Thanks. You're wasting your time. Catherine didn't kill him. The film's San Francisco setting is foregrounded from the very beginning, like another famous thriller that relies on a wayward detective watching a blonde woman who's not what she seems. Of course, I mean Alfred Hitchcock's Vertigo, a classic thriller whose central mystery revolves around a man following a woman around the city's streets, coastal scenes and woodland of California. In Vertigo too, the woman is not what or whom she seems to be, and duplicity, imitation and resemblance take centre stage in the narrative. In Basic Instinct, we next meet Catherine at her beach house, blonde hair first. Couldn't that just be Kim Novak? Next, Nick goes back downtown and into the office of a third woman, Dr Beth Garner, who we also meet first from behind, but who is marked out by her visual difference from the others. So now we've met three women who will eventually become three suspects. Basic Instinct knows its history. While this is a film in colour, it echoes the visual style of many a classical Hollywood film noir. Think of the slats of a blind sending shadows in lines across a face, who can we trust? Or the reflections of rain against a dashboard. You seem to know an awful lot about me. You know an awful lot about me. I don't know anything that's not police business. You know I don't wear any underwear, don't you, Nick? We soon find out that Nick, too, is also a classic film noir protagonist, an alcoholic and workaholic with a weakness for sex and coke and under discipline by internal affairs. He wants us to know he's just your average, healthy, totally fucked up cop. But from the moment he orders a whiskey on the rocks after three months of sobriety, we know that this case will be his downfall. In due course, he'll even be a kind of suspect, too. In many ways, the film makes no mistake of the tricks it has up its sleeve. A display of prowess laying bare all that it knows about film history and what that tells us about its characters. Our knowledge of how the genre works and how this film plays with it is part of the thrill. Like Catherine, we already know the bare bones of the plot. Somebody has to die, somebody always does. As a film about a man watching a woman, in which the woman watches back, the film relies on a kind of intensified spectatorship, with a plot that revolves around the construction of fiction, or multiple fictions, our attention is drawn still further to looks and to their deceptions. We are made aware of processes of voyeurism, even as we take pleasure in them. Catherine's sexual presence is reminiscent of the threat of the woman immortalised in the figure of the murderous femme fatale, suspiciously, maddeningly, destructively seductive. 
commonly stereotyped in the film noir through a chiaroscuro lighting regime that starkly contrasts light and dark, and a mise-en-scene populated with reflective surfaces that highlight her duplicity, the femme fatale is central to the narrative, but must also be the victim of its fatal conclusion. Again, Basic Instinct resurrects these narrative and visual gestures and tropes, but plays with them enough to leave us thinking. My friends call me Catherine. What Manny Vasquez used to call you. <laughs> Bitch, mostly. And just like in Atta McGoyan's film Chloe, the demands of the dramatic principles of the thriller force the potential of lesbian desire to its ultimate conclusion, again pairing sexual desire with violence and threat. So Basic Instinct offers a succession of female characters, each of whom has a murderous potential. Visually, one of the key ways the film plays this out is by contrast, simplifying and highlighting the typical figurations of femininity on screen. In countless films, especially but not only in the thriller genre, the woman represents a threat to the coherence of the male ego, the source of both his pleasure and his potential undoing. What do you want? This male ambivalence about women's duplicity is brought into visual form by mirrors, doppelgangers, portraits and disguises. This trope also accommodates heightened anxieties not only about female sexuality to core, but about lesbian sexuality specifically. The transposition of the lesbian couple into a nightmarish double form serves to lay bare existing anxieties about women's sexual excess. Think of the CGI used to create uncanny doubling effects in Darren Aronofsky's Black Swan, or in David Lynch's Mulholland Drive, where the character of the actress narrativizes the visual doubling at the heart of this anxious mythology of lesbian sexuality. Like Basic Instinct, Mulholland Drive flaunts the generic conventions of the thriller in order to trace the paradoxes of lesbian representability. Coming out of a history of censorship in which the notorious motion picture production code forbade for much of the 20th century any positive recognisable images of homosexuality on the screen, with the lesbian reduced to seduction or violence, murderous, suicidal or both, Mulholland Drive's Hollywood setting accommodates everything it knows has been said and said again. This lesbian is obsessive, pathetic, suicidal, murderous, lonely, seductive, oversexed and undersexed all at once. Or is she? Maybe it's just a fiction. In Basic Instinct, Roxy stands in as the lesbian character who is effectively collateral in Nick and Catherine's game of cat and mouse. Again, mirror images are used to convey a sense of unease around the character as she instructs Nick, if you don't leave her alone, I'll kill you. If you don't leave her alone, I'll kill you. And again, not just employing, but surely exemplifying the codes of the erotic thriller, Roxy draws our attention to the processes of watching. Up until her final moment, there is, of course, still ambiguity over who she is. As in Mulholland Drive, could this be any blonde? Roxy. Neo-noir films such as The Black Dahlia and Basic Instinct all play on a trope in which the representation of white femininity relies on an interplay of sameness and difference, the blonde, the brunette, the good, the bad. But like Mulholland Drive, Basic Instinct offers up this contrast and then once again toys with our expectations. Mulholland Drive is built on the sartorial division between Betty and Rita, its suspense occurring via the uncanny consequences of merging when one of the women dons a wig to match the other. Basic Instinct relies on this same trick, but subverts it in a different way. As important as the blonde hair is, as we know from the very start, it could be donned by anybody. Ruby Rich, the celebrated queer film critic, mentions Basic Instinct in the very first paragraph of her seminal essay, The New Queer Cinema, published in 1992, in which she announces the emergence of a counter-cinema movement about queer aesthetics, pleasure, violence and risk. We might not expect the pairing of Verhoeven's Basic Instinct with Derek Jarman's Edward II, but, as Rich writes, Basic Instinct was picketed by the self-righteous wing of the queer community until Dykes began to discover how much fun it was. 
But while it was released at the same time as these landmark films of the new queer cinema, Basic Instinct is distinctly a film that looks backwards in time. And that is where you'll find the fun in it. I like hands and fingers. You describe a uh, white silk scarf in your book. I've always had a fondness for white silk scarves. They're good for all occasions. But you said you like men to use their hands, didn't you? No, I said I like Johnny to use his hands. I don't make any rules, Nick. I go with the flow. <laughs> 